uh, inshallah, as I said last week, we're going to talk about the daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fatima, Salamullah Alayha, uh, because of certain statements that were made by a certain person uh, in Pakistan. Uh, you know, the, the legitimate scholars even hesitate to simply use the word daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You know, because daughter is a very ordinary term uh, for someone who is extraordinary. Uh, so they re prefer to say the princess of Rasulullah. <laughs> the problem that, you know, or where people run into problems, and this is the basic flaw with, with Wahhabism and, and uh, you know, Salafism as well, is they look upon Rasulullah like they look upon themselves. You know, that he is like us meaning that we are like him, you know, and that flaw messes everything up that comes after it. Uh, and the same way to think about the family of Rasulullah like we think about ourselves is also a major flaw. You know, and this gets to certain basics, you know, words, you know, as far as interpreting wording or actions of someone you need to know or have a basic understanding of their position and status. Uh, this is something we've talked about for those who, who, who come regularly, something we've talked about a lot of times. You know, where Allah in the Quran, He says, وَمَكَرُوا وَمَكَرُوا اللَّهُ وَاللَّهُ خَيْرُ الْمَكْرِينَ You know, and they plotted and connived, and Allah has His plan, and He is the best of planners. You know, even though the word is the same, but the meaning of the word changes depending on who it's being used to. Because to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is makkar, meaning conniver or schemer, this is kufr. You know, this takes you out of Islam. Same way, you know, when we look at the action of Allah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He asked Musa al-Islam, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى Oh Musa, what is in your right hand? You know, why is He asking? Does He not know? He knows. You know, so the action, if you think that he's asking because he doesn't know, this also is kufr. This takes you out of Islam. You know, he's asking the question to make sure everybody else understands what's going on. Same way when we look at terms used for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, we have to understand them according to his status. The same way his actions. You know, he didn't ask, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him with the knowledge, so he wasn't asking people something because he didn't know. Again, he wanted to either to show the status of the person being asked or to, to make sure everybody else understood. In order to understand the status of Bibi Fatima, salamu alayha, we have to have some basic understanding of Rasulullah so himself. And I'm not going to go into that, because those are things we've talked about a lot. Uh, and inshallah, we will continue to talk about. Rasulullah Sussam said about this daughter. You know, and this daughter, he had, of course, four daughters. But this one is different. You know, even though all of them are princesses, all of them, you know, their status is something we can't comprehend. But the status among them of Bibi Fatima is different. Because through her, his progeny continued. About her, he said that she is the leader of the women of Jannah. Just some basic things. The leader of the women of Jannah. Of all of the women of Jannah. So within Jannah, you will have those who are the mothers of prophets. Those who are the wives of prophets. And yet she is the leader of them all. Rasulullah Sassam would be sitting in his house. You know, Abu Bakr would come in, he would stay sitting, remain sitting. Ali would come in, he would remain seated. Omar, Uthman, Talha, Zubair, all of the companions, they would come in, they would come in and Rasulullah Sassam would remain seated. Whenever, every time, whenever, this, the hadith is in Sayy Tirmizi, it's in, it's in Tirmizi and it is Sayy. Whenever Fatima Salamullah would come, 
Rasulullah says, would stand up for her. He would kiss her on, his, on her forehead and then seat her where he was seated. And he said about her, he said that she is a part of me. Bidatuminni, she is a, a part of me. Whatever pleases her pleases me, and whatever displeases her displeases me. You know, if he had stopped only at the first part that whatever pleases her pleases me, then somebody could say, well, she's displeased, but it didn't displease the messenger. He or he specified both things. Whatever pleases her pleases me, and whatever displeases her displeases me. Which is interesting because all of creation is looking for the pleasure of Allah. You know, you ask, you know, any believer, oh, why do you pray? For the pleasure of Allah. Why do you fast? For the pleasure of Allah. Why do you do anything? For the pleasure of Allah. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa duha says what? About Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wala sawfa yu'tika rabbuka fatarda. That I will give you so much that you will be pleased with me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't need to please anybody. But this is his love for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa All of creation is looking for the pleasure of Allah. And Allah is looking at the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Which tells us that the pleasure of Allah lies in the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the pleasure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa lies in the pleasure of Bibi Fatima sallallahu alayhi wa And as part of the, you know, at, you know, in the beginning when he says that she is a part of me. You know, the whole is the sum of its parts. This is a co easy concept to understand. The whole is the sum of the parts. Of course, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has no parts. He is simply whole. He is Allah. But for everything else, the whole is the sum of the parts. And when Rasulullah says that she is a part of me. So if the whole is pure, then the part must be pure. If the whole is perfect, then the part must be perfect. If the whole is innocent, then the part must be the same. I mean, this, this, is, this isn't rocket science. This is very simple. The wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu Bibi Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu anha, she said about Bibi Fatima, salamu alayha. She said that, that she never saw anyone more on the sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu other than Bibi Fatima. To the extent, she said that we, the wives of Rasulullah Sallallahu we couldn't tell when Rasulullah Sallallahu was walking or when Bibi Fatima was walking. You know, you, certain people you can tell, okay, the way they're, that you can hear their footsteps coming, you can, you can tell, okay, this is so-and-so, just the way they walk. And the wives of the Rasulullah said that we could not tell the difference between her walking and his walking. And that she was on the, on the way of Rasulullah more than anyone else they'd ever seen. Because again, she is part of him. And this is why Imam Malik, rahmatullahi he said that, that she is above all of the rest of creation after the prophets. Including Abu Bakr and Ali. Because he said his, his argument, which you can't argue with, was that how can I prefer anyone above even a part of Rasulullah? Again, these are not difficult concepts to understand. The issue that came up is, you have the issue of fidaq. And fidaq, for those who don't know what fidaq is, fidaq was a city, a small town in Arabia, close to Khaybar. The ruling is that, you know, if the Muslim army would go to war, and if they would fight, 
then 20% was for Allah and His Messenger. The remainder 80% would be distributed among the soldiers. This is called uh, Anfad, the spoils of war. You have something that's also known as Fay. Fay is that the army goes and the place surrenders without fight. And in that situation, 100% is for Allah and His Messenger. So this becomes the property of Rasulullah. There were other properties that Rasulullah had, and the simple example of that is Mukhairi, who was a Jew, who became Muslim on the day of Uhud. And before it, the battle starts, he comes to Rasulullah and he says that I feel that I will be martyred in this battle. And I have seven gardens in Medina Munawara, all of which have water. And if something happens to me, then they are all yours. And he is one of the first martyrs of Uhud. And so all of that became the property of Rasulullah Sallallahu But Rasulullah Sallallahu used to spend all of this on his ummah. If you look at the condition of the household of Rasulullah Sallallahu the condition of everybody else improved. You know, from a, from a wealth standpoint. The last houses to improve the condition from a wealth standpoint was the house of Rasulullah himself and the house of his daughter, his princess, Bibi Fatima, salam alayha. But when Khaybar was conquered, you know, the condition of all of, of Medina improved. When the people of Fidak came and surrendered, now he started spending that wealth upon the household. Rasulullah would spend that wealth upon the household, you know, upon the household of Ali, radiallahu anhu. When <coughs> Rasulullah passed, Abu Bakr radiallahu is chosen as the Khalifa. Abu Bakr radiallahu takes all of this wealth, all of this land, all of this property, and puts it in Baytul Mal, in the public treasury. And he does this without giving any explanation. He simply does it. The daughter of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi comes to him. Bibi Fatima Salamu Alaihi She comes to Abu Bakr And the way she comes to him is also important to understand. But before this, uh, we have to understand again her status, her character. You know, because you can see two people from a distance fighting and you think they're fighting, but then later on you realize or you're told that, oh no, those were you know, martial artists and they were just practicing, they were sparring. And yet you've told everybody else, oh, they were fighting, you know, when they weren't fighting. You know, because you're looking at it from a distance and even if you're looking at it close, if they're very good at what they do, you know, if you don't know who they are, then you think, oh, they're fighting. Surah uh, Surah Insan in 29th Jews. The whole surah is revealed in honor of the household of Ali, radiallahu anhu. You know, in the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein alayhi wasallam. What happens is that you know, or part of what happens with certain verses is that you know. There's nothing to eat in the house. They're fasting because there's nothing to eat. Ali Radha, he goes and he works for a day. He gets enough bread that they can break their fast with. They're waiting to break their fast and as they're about to break their fast, there's a knock on the door. They open the door, beggar. He says, give me, I need something to eat. They take that bread, yeah, give it to him. They go to sleep, hungry, drink a little water, and that's it. No one complains. The next day, the same thing. Now again, they're sitting, waiting to break the fast and the knock on the door. Open the door, and an orphan saying, give me something to eat. They give him everything. Drink a little water, 
You know, they go, Ali radiallahu anhu goes to the masjid. The grandsons, you know, if, if you look at where their houses were, they were connected to the masjid. They were right next door to Rasulullah sallallahu They are seeing Rasulullah sallallahu in this condition. Don't raise a voice. No complaints. Third day, same thing. And this time they knock on the door. You know, he's a prisoner. He says, I'm hungry, give me something to eat. They give him everything. At this point, Jibreel al-Islam comes to Rasulullah He says to him, Ya Rasulullah please do something. You know, your, your, your children, your grandchildren, for whom Rasulullah says, he said, Fatima is my joy. And her sons are the fruits of my soul. So Jibreel al-Islam, he says, please do something. We, the angels, we can't stand this anymore. None of them raised their voice, saying, give me something, asking for anything. This is their character, that they prefer the ummah over themselves. So when Fidak happens, when Abu Bakr then he takes Fidak and he places in Baytul Mal, which is where all of the money that used to run, run the household would come from, she goes to him. But you know, the problem is when we think of this, you know, like, like here in the South, they say WWJD. Uh, 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 you know, what would Jesus do? And of course, what they mean really is, what, what, what do I want to do, and I can impose it on him. That's what they mean by it. And unfortunately, we have become, have the same mindset now. You know, we look at the actions of these people who are so pure, and we think of, oh, if I was in that condition, what would I do? And that's how we judge it. We are not like them. We are worldly dogs running after the world. And, and, we, and, you know, I can't even say dogs because on the Day of Judgment, the dogs might complain. You know, you associate us with, with these types of, of people. Dogs are loyal to their master. We have forgotten everything. She goes and she asks for fidah. And she goes with, her, with the uncle of Rasulullah Hazrat Abbas. And this is important to, to note. She doesn't go with her sons. She doesn't go with her husband. She doesn't go with anybody else except Abbas. Radiallahu. And she asks him, ask Abu Bakr for fidah. Abu Bakr radiallahu, now he says why he did what he did. He says that Rasulullah said that we the prophets do not leave an inheritance and whatever we leave is sadqa. It is charity for the Ummah. But he also says, he says that I prefer to do good to the family of Rasulullah so before I prefer to do good to my own family. And I will continue to, to use the wages from Fidak the same way Rasulullah so used to distribute it without any change. She doesn't say anything. If she had an issue with his decision, she would have said, how can you do this? She is the first qutb of this religion. She is the one who was raised in the household of Rasulullah She is the one who, who is seeing revelation come. You know, her level of knowledge is something we cannot comprehend. Ali Radio is the door to the city of knowledge. And she is his kuf. You know, she is, is his equal. She knows exactly what she's doing and why she's doing it. And she also knew before she had asked Abu Bakr why he had done what he had done. But since he didn't give an explanation, 
He left himself open for, for criticism later on. And Abu Bakr is one of those whom Rasulullah could not tolerate hearing anything against. Anyone who complained about Abu Bakr, Rasulullah would chastise them. And she knows this. Again, she is on the sunnah of Rasul, on the sunnah of her father more than anybody else. So she goes to defend Abu Bakr. And also by doing this, when she leaves with, with nothing in hand, this silences all of those who had been saying that, oh, he's doing all of this to, to create a kingdom. To establish his own kingdom. This is what this was the accusation of Quraysh. So it silenced them all. It explained why Abu Bakr did what he did. And when he gives this explanation, no one came and argued with him, which means they all accepted it. Ali Radha, who again is the city of knowledge, who is the door to the city of knowledge, who is the greatest faqih among the companions of Rasulullah. He did not object. None of them objected. She goes back home without saying a word. Again, we have to understand her doings according to her status and her character. And it's not like, oh, what would I do? I am not like her. And she is not like me. Again, if the whole is, is pure, the part is pure. And so what this certain so-called scholar said was that, oh, when she went and asked for fidah, you know, she did uh, khata, you know, she made a mistake. I mean, that's putting it mildly. You know, which is also interesting because for 1400 years, you know, there have been people who have called Ali radhi kafir. None of them have even raised a question about Bibi Fatima, salam and this guy now, he's all, you know, she was wrong when she, when she asked for Fidel. That's the approval. Time's running out, and this is, I'm going to end with this. She is so pure and so perfect in her modesty. You know, when Rasulullah was about to pass, and she came to see him, and he said something to her. And she starts crying. And again, the wives of Rasulullah are witnesses to this. She starts crying, and then, she, then he calls her again, and he says something else to her, and she starts laughing. Because he told her first that this illness he would pass with this illness. And she starts crying. And then he tells her that you will be the first among the family to come and meet me. And she starts laughing. And six months after Rasulullah Sassam passed, she passed. But the way she passed, again, so, so, so perfect in her modesty. When she was asked about the perfect prayer of the women, she said that the, that prayer would be the one that she prays in the innermost room of the house with the door closed. But when it came her time, she made ghusl herself. You know, she goes and she makes ghusl and she put on her coffin herself. And she told her husband that bury me at night so no one can see me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even allow Israel al-Islam or even Jibreel al-Islam to come and take her soul. He took it himself according to his status, his, his honor. You know, 
know, because the angels, you know, when we say Jibreel, we say he. We say Mikael, we say he. Israel is a he. And she is so modest and pure that Allah SWT didn't even allow them to come to her. That he himself took her soul. So, time's up. Inshallah, you know. And, you know, we really, I mean, we start talking about her and we could go on and on for days and, and you know, not even do any justice to her status. So, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, you know, and truly give us an understanding of this princess of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and give us her love and her pleasure. So, you know, and just raise us up in a condition where she is pleased with us. Because if she is pleased with us, then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi is pleased with us. And if he is pleased, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased. And that's it. But if she is displeased, then the same thing extends on. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is displeased, and if Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is displeased, then Allah is displeased, period. Yeah, so may He give us her pleasure, you know, and allow us to, 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 you know, kiss her feet, because even on the Day of Judgment, when she enters the field, An announcement will be made, and she will come with 70,000 hur from, from paradise. An announcement will be made to, to everybody to lower your gaze because the daughter or the princess of Rasulullah Sussan is coming. And everybody will lower their gazes. May Allah SWT again give us some understanding of her status. And so those who have not made sunnah go and make sunnah, inshallah.